what's going on tamers it's me the digimon card games sickest youtube creator and i don't mean that in like a gin y sort of way i mean that in the, the boomer sense where i just have had the flu all week um you can probably hear it in my voice that's why i probably sound like one of alvin and chipmunks like lost brothers uh, but that's neither here nor there um the fact that i can actually sit down and actually record something is a big step up from tuesday uh, but that, since then, I've clearly had a lot of time to just kind of sit and think about the game, uh, Digimon card game, that is. And uh, I figured that maybe I would do something a bit different than my highly edited, normal style of video, where it's a bit more casual and just kind of like a free flow, like, dialogue or thought of things that I've been, like, thinking about in the game. The thing that I spent the most time pondering this week was, you know, what makes decks strong in the Digimon card game versus what makes them lacking. And after some thought, I really came to the conclusion that all of the best decks share one commonality. But before I go directly into that, I want to lay a little bit of foundation, but trust me, we're going to get there very quickly. Um, so in the game, there are three basic ways to play, and that is Rookie Rush, where you just play a bunch of low-level Digimon and you just keep attacking as fast as possible. The second is Megazoo, where you do the exact opposite, where you play just fat honking Digimon with big effects uh, for loss of memory, and then you slowly overwhelm your opponent that way if they can't take them out. And the last one is by far the most common one, which is mid-range, where you try to eke out an advantage on the memory counter, where you, you know, evolve from your 3 to your level 4, level 5, and level 6 to get an advantage and win that way. And right now, most of the decks in the game operate under that kind of mid-range ideology. Going back to what makes all the best decks the best decks, uh, they all end up playing this mid-range game, but they cheat. They skip a level, and then later on, they refund you memory. So not only are you like bypassing one of the stages required for mid-range, but also you're getting a refund when you, when you get there. So when you take a look at decks like Numamon, which skips the level threes, and they have Platinum Numamon or Numamon X to refund you basically either a Digimon or Memory in the case of Platinum Numamon. Uh, you also have Yellow Vaccine, which skips level fives if it needs to, uh, and then it refunds you uh, based on either the Rapidmon X or the plethora of Memory uh, plus effects from things like the TK Tamer, the uh, Patamon, as well as cards like Emissary of Hope, which don't exactly refund, but they reduce cost, which is, in my, I kind of factor that in as a refund. But I, the way I think about it is that, for example, when Patamon evolves into a Rapidmon in uh, your security, you're technically making or getting five memory for free, because the Rapidmon would normally be four, and then the Patamon itself, the inheritance effects, gives you plus one memory back. So. That's a five memory play for zero. So it's, in a sense, you're getting a five memory refund uh, for this, just having the Patamon and moving it into the into the battle area. And the last one is Ancient Gururumon, which essentially skips to level five, and then the Ancient Gururumon will refund you the cost of your Tamer, or in this case, your level three, by just letting you play one on the board. Initially, I thought that maybe the problem was just the fact that they could skip levels, but uh, that mechanic actually already existed in the game and it wasn't super powerful when it was first introduced. When you take a look at things like the old starter deck Vmon or starter deck Giamon uh, level 3s that had the ability to warp for 4 memory, those were so-so at best. The 4 memory made it so that your turn was almost guaranteed to end, so you couldn't really do much, you had to spend the entire turn evolving. Um, and when they were destroyed, if they were destroyed the following turn, then you just got nothing out of that play, right? It was hard to make use of a Digimon if you can't attack with it, or you can't do anything with it. So these new decks basically gets you where you need to be faster, but they also give you a kickback after you get there. And this kind of worries me a bit, because one of the things that I find the most fun about Digimon is that you are implored to go up the chain, because Digimon can, you know, Digivolve into so many different directions, you can be really creative here. But you're, like I said before, you're encouraged to go up the chain because you get these effects as you go up. But you also get the inheritance effects so that once you get to your level 6, it's like this big cash out of like a really powerful Digimon. And these two points of skipping levels and getting a refund kind of worry me because it feels like it's the direction that Pokemon took. Pokemon is another game that has like a similar evolving mechanic, but it feels like even from like the early days of that game, decks that didn't have to evolve or decks that prioritize basic Pokemon were just better overall. It feels like because of this, you kind of like lose the entire evolution mechanic. I know the VMAX exists, but I don't know. I just feel like the fact that they're skipping like the level twos, level threes means that you're just like, I don't know, losing the spirit of the franchise. You know what I mean? Switching gears back to Digimon here though, um, I actually had this fear of like the V style cards when the Ace cards were initially revealed. I figured that, you know, people would just start to skip the level fours and level threes 
but that wasn't really the case. The overflow mechanic really did balance those cards pretty well in that you know you could play down a four cost Metal Greymon and then go into a War Greymon, but if he dies, oh boy, if he dies, the game is over, friend. While on the subject of balance, and coming back to the initial hypothesis here of you know all the decks that are really strong can skip levels and they give you a refund of some sort, I'm thinking of ways to actually like balance those cards out, and honestly, it's kind of tough because they all have this central idea, but they do it in different ways. Um, my best answer was like thinking of maybe attaching a floodgate effect to some delay options. Say for example, an option that triggered whenever you know a Digimon or Tamer is played by an effect, or you know if you ended up skipping a level whenever you Digivolve. Like if uh, you go from a three to a five, or you know a four to a six, then it triggered in some way. Um, that. Or, um, and I like this one a little bit more personally because I liked this style of deck initially, and that is these more potent Bagara Army style decks where, you know, whenever an opponent fulfills some condition, you can spin your source cards to basically gain or reverse their advantage. Uh, so they basically get like no advantage or negative advantage for taking some action. For example, you know, the uh, I think the old Leomon cards would, whenever your opponent would draw extra cards from an effect, you make them discard the same amount of cards as well. So they basically had like the, the, the equalizer from gaining some advantage. <sighs> Sorry, quick drink break. My voice, you can already tell, is like, oof. <laughs> It is going through it right now. And so that's gonna be it for my TED talk uh, in this one. Um, so what do you think? Uh, I wanna make this kind of like a dialogue style video um, where you guys can respond in the comments below. But um, do you think that you know my initial hypothesis is right? Like, is that the issue? Skipping levels and uh, being able to get a kickback in some form? Or is it something else? Uh, I'm happy to discuss that. Um, keep it civil though, Jesus Christ. Some of you guys are wild down there sometimes, Jesus. Whew. But uh, also, do you think that like that solution, being able to you know have a delay card or delay effect or some sort of Bogota style effect that like nullifies advantage in those ways, to kind of stop those decks would be useful or not? And if you have any other ideas, I'd love to hear them as well. Also, yeah, let me know if you like this style of video in the comments below. Um, yeah, if folks like this, then we'll keep doing. It. I've got a lot of other ideas that have kind of been bouncing around in my head that I have to talk about. And it's kind of like dialogue-esque video. Uh, and uh, if not, then we won't do it anymore. Um, anyways, folks. I'm gonna get out of here. Uh, I'm gonna go rest up. Hopefully I'll be at full power again soon. Uh, before you get out of here, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.